so we'll now look at the functionality of different form widgets in detail, looking at what options are available to collect different types of data. This guide is somewhat exhaustive, covering all of the available native form widgets. Wow, okay, this is going to take a while. So common attributes. Many of these attributes used, uh, many of these elements used to define form widgets have some of their own attributes. However, there is a set of attributes common to all form elements that give you some control over those widgets. So many elements, okay. So autofocus. Uh, this Boolean attribute lets you specify that the element should automatically have input focus when the page loads, unless the user overrides it, for example, by trying, by typing in a different control. Only one form associated element in an element can have this attribute specified. Um, disabled. This Boolean attribute indicates that the user cannot interact with this element. If this attribute is not specified, the element inherits its settings from the containing element. For example, field set, if there is no containing element with the disabled attribute set, then the element is enabled. Uh, then you have form. The form element that the widget is, is associated with, the value of the attribute must be the ID attribute of the form. Element in the same document. In theory, it lets you set a form widget outside of a form element. In practice, however, there is no browser that supports this feature. Oh, okay. Name, uh, the name of an element. This is submitted with the form data. And then value, the element's initial value. Um, okay. So text input fields. Text input fields are the most basic form widget. Uh, they are a very convenient way to let the user enter any kind of data. However, some text fields can be specialized to achieve particular needs. We have already seen a few example, uh, a few simple examples. All text fields share some common behaviors. They can be marked as read only. The user cannot modify the input value or even disabled. The input value is never sent with the rest of the form data. They can have placeholders. This is text that appears inside the text input box that describes the purpose of the box. They can be constrained in size, the physical box, uh, the physical size of the box, the length, the maximum number of characters that can be entered into the box. They can benefit from spell checking if the browser supports it. Um, note the input element is special because it can be almost anything. By simply setting its type attribute, it can change radically. And it is used for creating most types of form widgets, including single line text field controls without text inputs uh, and data control buttons. However, there are some exceptions like text area for multi-line inputs. Did someone need one? Um, let's see. Your voice is cutting off uh, too much. Oh, is it? I think I, I think it's because uh, the this this group chat's server is set to US East. Oh, okay. And you're all the way. Yeah. On the other yeah. side. Uh, maybe we can go to a middle ground somewhere. Let's choose. Uh, Would um, West, Western Europe work? Maybe. <laughs> no, it's fine. I think. Uh, I think uh, if you make another account on Zoom, maybe you'll get some more free time. I guess. Another what on Zoom? Another account. Another account. No, no, the, it's not the free time. It's if I have more than uh, three people on my Zoom chat, then what happens is, uh, yeah, if I have more than three people on my Zoom chat, then it only gives me 40 minutes. Okay. That's why. It's not, the, it's not like the account is expired or anything. Okay, okay. Uh, 
Uh, it's fine, right? I yeah. guess, because the page is in front of me, so mm-hmm. I can read. Um. Okay. So single line text fields. A single line text field is created using an input element whose type attribute uh, attribute value is set to text. Also, if you don't provide the type attribute, text is the default value. The value text for this attribute is also known. Uh, where was it? The value for this t- value text for this attribute is also the fallback value if the value specify for the type attribute is unknown by the browser. Okay, I see. Oh, that's what happened with Internet Explorer. Uh, you can find examples of all the single line in type fields at GitHub. I am a text comment here, enter your email, true. Enter your password, true. Search, enter your number, web address, dot com. That is a URL. Okay. Uh, And it's basic single, uh, here's a basic single line text field example. Input type is text, ID is comment, name is comment, value, I am a text field. That's the value it has in here. Oh, that's the value it has automatically, okay. Uh, Single line text fields have only one true constraint. If you type a text with line breaks, the browser removes those line breaks before sending the data. HTML5 enhances the basic uh, single line text field by adding several special values for the type attribute or uh, special values for the type attribute. Those values can turn an input element into a single line text field, but they add a few extra constraints and features to add. Email address field. This type of field is set with the value email for the type attribute. So type is email, ID email. This type is used and the user is required to type a valid email address into the field. Any other content causes the browser to display an error when the form is submitted. Note that this is client side error validation performed by the browser. It is also possible to let the user type several email addresses into the same input separated by commas by including multiple attributes. On some devices, especially on mobile, a different virtual keypad may be presented that is more suitable for entering an email address. Um, Password field. This type of field is set using the value password and the type attributes. So if I type in password, I say, okay. Uh, It doesn't add any special constraints, but it does obscure the values entered into the fields. So it can't be read by others. Keep in mind, this is just a user interface feature. Unless you submit your form securely, it will get sent in plain text, which is bad for security. A malicious party could intercept your data and steal passwords, uh, credit card details, or whatever else you've submitted. The best way to protect users from this is to host any pages involving forms over a secure connection um, so that the data is encrypted before it's sent. Modern browsers recognize the security implementation, uh, implications of sending form data over an insecure connection and have, implementing, and have implemented warnings to deter users from using insecure forms. For more information on what Firefox implements, see secure passwords. Search field. Uh, This type of field is set by using the search for the type attribute. Uh, The main difference between text and search is how the browser styles it. Often search fields are rendered with round corners. Okay. Um, Yep, so often, where are we? 
uh, with round corners or given X to press, uh, clear the entered value. However, there is another added feature worth noticing. Their values can be automatically saved to be auto-completed across multiple pages on the same sites. Uh, this type of, so phone number field, this type of field is set using the TEL as the value of the type attributes. Due to wide variety of phone numbers, uh, for formats around the world, this type of field does not enforce any constraints on the value entered by the user. This is primarily a semantic difference, although on some devices, a different virtual keypad might be present that is more suitable for entering phone numbers. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, man. Hello. Hey, sorry I'm late, bro. I'm actually uh, about to start live streaming. Uh, I'm building a website for my buddy. We've been getting the, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, guys. We've been building, a, I'm, I'm about to start building a, this website for my buddy. So, live streaming not right now, but uh, how's everything? Like, I, you know, I usually I make the calls and everything. Uh, just like uh, my other dragons, I'm really happy that you guys uh, stepped it up and uh, started meeting, man. You know, respect, dude. Oh, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, uh, we got it all set up. Okay. We got a call going here. We got the Zoom recording. We're just okay. moving through. Okay. Yeah. Hey, did you ever upload? You never uploaded those videos, though, right? No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant to. Uh, to no, no, no. I see. It's okay, dude. Take your time, bro. I totally appreciate it. Just uh, try to get it. You try to just try to upload them tonight. It's really quick. Mm -hmm. But um, I just they don't get lost. You know. Mm -hmm. No, no, I got you. I got um, you. I'll do it tonight. Gentlemen, uh, so what are you? Who are we? Uh oh yeah. So URL, uh, this type of field is set using a value URL for the type attribute. So the type is URL. It adds a special validation constraint to the field uh, with the browser reporting an error if invalid URLs are entered. Just because a URL is well valid does not mean it refers to a location that actually exists. Okay. So multi-line text field. Uh, multi-line text field is specified using text area rather than using the input element. So text area is, okay. The main difference between text area and a regular line text field is that the users are allowed to type text that includes hard line breaks. So pressing return or enter. Um, you can find a live example of the multi-line text field on GitHub. Have a look at it and notice how in most browsers, the text area is giving a drag handle at the bottom right to allow you to resize this. This resizing ability can be turned off by setting the text area resize property to none. Oh, I see, okay. Okay. Uh, text area also accepts a few extra attributes to control its rendering across several lines. Um, so you have calls. Default is 20, the visible width of the text control in average character widths. And then you have rows, the number of la visible lines for the control. And then you have wrap indicates how control so possible values are hard or soft. Hmm. Notes that the text area element is written a bit differently from the inputs element. Uh, the input element is an empty element, which means that it cannot contain any child elements. On the other hand, the text area is a regular element that can contain text uh, content children. Okay. While this one is like that, okay. There's no closing. So there are two key related points to note here. If you want to define a value for an input element, you have to use the value attribute. For the text area element, on the other hand, uh, you have to put the default text between the starting tag and the closing tag of the text area. Because of this nature, the text area element only accepts text content. This means that any HTML content put inside is rendered as if it were plain text. I see, okay. You want to start reading? Yeah. So, drop down content. Drop down widgets are a simple way to let users select 
one of many options without taking up much space in the user interface. HTML has two forms of drop down content the select box and autocomplete box. In both cases, the interaction is the same. Once the control is activated, the browser displays a list of values that you can select between. If you find the examples on GitHub. Okay. Uh, okay. Select box. A select box is created with a select element with one or more option elements as its children, each of which specifies one of its possible values. So, okay. If required, the default value of the select box can be set using the selector attribute on the desired option element. This option is then pre-selected when the page loads. The option elements can also be nested inside opt group elements to create visually associated groups of values. Okay. So if an option element is set with a value attribute, that attribute's value is sent when the form is submitted. If the value attribute is omitted, the content of the option element is used as the select box's value. On the opt group element, the label attribute is displayed before the values. But even if it is, but even if it looks somewhat like an option, it is not selectable. Okay. Multiple choice select box. By default, a select box let only lets the user select a single value. By adding the multiple attribute to the select element, you can allow users to select several values by using the default mechanism provided by the operating system. That is by holding down command or control. In a note, in the case of multiple choice select box, the select box no longer displays the values as drop down con content. Instead, they are all displayed at once in the list. Okay. Auto complete box. You can provide suggested automatically completed values for form widgets using the data list element with some child option element to specify the values to display. The data list is then bound to a text file, usually it's a text field, usually an input element using the list attribute. Once a data list is affiliated with the form widget, its options are used to autocomplete text entered by the user. Typically, this is presented to the user as a drop down box listing possible matches for what they have typed into the input. Okay. Note according to the HTML specification, the list and the data list can only can be used with any kind of widget requiring a user input. However, it is unclear how it should work with controls other than text and different browsers behave differently from case to case. Because of that, be cautious using this feature with anything but text field. Mm. Data list support and fallbacks. Um, if you if you think it's noisy, then just tell me. Oh yeah, no, it's no problem. Okay. Data list support and fallbacks. The data list element is a very recent addition to HTML form. So browser support is a bit more limited than what we saw earlier. Most notably, it isn't supported in Internet Explorer versions below 10. And Safari still isn't supported at the time of writing. To handle this, there's a little trick and there is a little trick to provide a nice fallback for those browsers. Mm. Browsers that support the data list element will ignore all the elements that are optional elements and will work as expected. On the other hand, 
browsers that do not support data list element will display the labels and the select box. Of course, there are other ways to handle the lack of support for the data list element, but this is the simplest other trend to require JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Checkable items. Checkable items are widgets whose state you can change by clicking on them. There are two kinds of checkable items the checkbox and the radio button. Both use the checked attribute to indicate whether the widget is checked by default or not. It's worth noting that these widgets do not behave exactly like other widgets, other form widgets. For most form widgets, once the form is submitted, all widgets that have a name attribute are sent, even if no value has been filled out. In the case of checkable items, the values are sent only if they are checked. If they are not checked, nothing is sent, not even their names. Note, you can find the example of that. For For maximum usability accessibility, you are advised to surround each list of related items in a field set with a legend providing an overall description of the list. Okay. Each individual pair of label input elements should be contained in its own list item or similar. This is shown in the examples. You also need to provide values for these kinds of inputs inside the value attribute if you want them to be meaningful. If no value is provided, check boxes and radio buttons are given a value of on. Check box. A check box is created using the input elements with its type attribute set to the value check box. Input type check box. Okay. Including the checked attribute makes the checkbox checked automatically when the page loads. Mm. Um, radio button. A radio button is created using the input element with its type attribute set to the value radio. <laughs> Several radio buttons can be tied together. If they share the same value for their name attribute, they will be considered to be in the same group of buttons. Okay. Only one button in given group may be checked at a time at the same time. This means that when one of them is checked, all others automatically get unchecked. When the form is sent, only the value of the checked radio button is sent. If none of them are checked, the whole pool of radio button is considered to be in an unknown state and no value is sent with the form. Okay. Yeah. Buttons. Within the HTML forms, there are three kinds of button. Submit sends the form data to the server for button elements, omitting the type attribute or an invalid type. type invalid value of type results in a submit button. Reset. Resets all the form widgets to the default values. Anonymous. Buttons that have no automatic effect, but can be customized using JavaScript code. Mm. Okay, and find the examples. A button is created using a button element or an input element. And the value of the type attribute that's it's the value of the type attribute that specifies what kind of button is displayed. So, submit, type submit, reset, type reset, and anonymous type button. Buttons always behave the same, whether you use a button element or an input element. These are how, there are however some notable differences. As you can see from the examples, the elements let you use HTML content in the labels, which are inserted inside the opening and closing button tags. 
Input elements, on the other hand, are empty elements. The labels are inserted inside value attributes and therefore only accept print text content. With button elements, it's possible to have a value different than the button's label by setting it inside a value attribute. This isn't reliable in versions of Internet Explorer prior to IE8. Okay, so, mm. so we have read all of this before. A little bit, yeah. Uh, technically speaking, there are almost no difference in a button and the button element or the input element. The only noticeable difference is this is the but label of the button itself. Within an input element, the label can only be character data. Whereas in a button element, the label can be HTML. Okay. So it can be styled accordingly. Okay. I'll take over from here. Okay. So we got advanced form widgets. Um, in this section, we'll cover those widgets that let users input complex or unusual data. This includes exact or approximate numbers, dates, times, colors, things like that. Uh, widgets, so numbers. So widgets for numbers are created with the input element it is with its type attribute set to the value number. <laughs> this control looks like a text field but allows only floating point numbers and usually provides some button to increase or decrease the value of the widget. Uh, it's also possible to constrain the value by setting a max and min, specify the amount by which the increases and decrease button changes the widgets value by specifying the step attributes. For example, input number, name is age, ID is age, max is one, sorry, min is one, max is 20, and step is two. Would give you something like this. What is, if I do 20, okay, so I gotta do one. And then three, five, seven, nine. Okay. This creates a number widget whose value is restricted to any value between one and uh, 10, and whose increase and decrease button changes it by two. Number inputs are not supported in versions of Internet Explorer below 10. True. Okay. Uh, sliders is another way to pick a number. Um, visually speaking, sliders are less accurate than text fields, therefore they're used to pick a number whose exact value is not necessarily important. A slider is created using the input with its type attributes set to the value range. It's important to properly configure your slider, uh, so to that end it is highly recommended that you set the max and min and step attributes. So that would look like this. So max is 500, min is zero, and step is 10. True, okay. Um, this example creates a slider whose value may range between zero and 10, uh, zero and 500, and whose increment, decrement buttons change the value by 10. One problem with sliders is that they don't offer any kind of visual feedback as to what the current value is. Uh, you need to add this yourself with JavaScript, but it is relatively easy to do. In this example, we'll add an empty span element in which we can write the current values of the slider, updating it as it's changed. Okay, this is JavaScript. You don't need to know this right now. Um, span class, okay. Uh, we can store references to the range input and the span into two variables. We can immediately set the uh, span text content to the current value of the input. Finally, we set up an on, e, on input event handler so that every time the slider is moved, the span contact is updated to the new value. Count, bean count. Okay. Uh, we have date and time picker. So gathering data and time values has traditionally been a nightmare for web developers. 
HTML5 brings some enhancements here by providing a special control to handle the specific kind of data. A date and time control is used is created using the input element and an appropriate value for the type attribute, depending on whether you wish to collect dates, times, or both. So date time local, this creates a widget to display the and pick a date with time, but without any specific time zone information. So input date time local, name date time. So that would create something like this. Okay. Um, month. This creates a widget to display and pick a month with the year. Time, this creates a widget to display and pick a time value. Hmm. Okay. Week, this creates a widget to display and pick a week number and it's a year. Hmm. Uh, all date and time controls can be constrained using the max and min attributes. Uh, label for my date. When are you available this summer? Close the label. Input type is date. Name is my date, min, max. Okay. Warning. The date and time widgets don't have the deepest support at the moment. Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Opera support them well, but there's no support for IE and Safari and Safari has patchy support. Colors are always a bit difficult to handle. Um, there are many ways to express them, red, green, blue values, decimal, hexadecimal, HSL values, keywords. The color widget lets us pick a color in both textual and visual ways. The color widget is created using the input element with this type attribute set to color. Hello? Yeah. Ah, oh, sweet. Hey. I think I'm caught up. You guys are at the color? Yep. Okay. Okay. I can read some when, once you're done your section of it. Okay. Uh, do you want to do the other widgets? Sure. Um, there are a few other widgets that cannot be easily classified due to their very specific behaviors, but which are still very... File picker. HTML forms are able to send files to a server. This specific action is detailed in the article, sending and retrieving the file picker widget is how the user can choose one or more files to send. To create a file picker widget, you use the input element with its, its type attribute set to file. The types of files that are accepted can be constrained using the accept attribute. In addition, if you want to let the user pick more than one file, you can do so by adding the multiple. Example, in this example, a file picker is created that requests graphics in, graphic image. The user is allowed to select multiple files in this case. Hmm. Let's see how this looks like. Except oh, yeah. image. Okay. Hidden content. It's sometimes convenient for technical reasons to have pieces of data that are sent with the form but not displayed to the user. To do this, you can add an invisible element in your use an input with its type attribute set to hit. If you create such an element, it's required to set its name and value attribute. Okay. The image button control is one which is displayed exactly like an image element, except, except that when the user clicks on it, it behaves like a submit. An image button is created using an input element with its type attribute set to, to the value. This image or this element supports exactly the same set of attributes as the image element. 
plus all the attributes supported by the other form button. If the image button is used to submit the form, this widget doesn't submit its value. It said the X and Y coordinates of the click on the image are submitted. The coordinates are relative to the image, meaning that the upper left corner of the image represents the coordinate zero. The coordinates are sent as two key value pairs. The X value key is, is the value of the name attribute followed by the string dot X. The Y value key is the value of the name attribute followed by the string dot uh, Y. So for example, when you click on it on the image of this wi widget, you're sent to a URL like Okay. Okay. This is a very convenient way to build a hot map. How these values are sent and retrieved is detailed in the sending and retrieving form data article. Meters and progress bars. Meters and progress bars are a visual representation of num numeric progress. A progress bar represents a value that changes over time up to a maximum value specified by the max. Such a bar is created using a progress element. All right. This is for implement. Uh, actually, I want to see how this. Ah, uh, okay. Um, this is for implementing anything requiring progress reporting, such as the percentage of the total files downloaded, or the number of questions filled in that question. The content inside the progress element is a fallback for browsers that don't support the element, and for assistive technologies to vocalize. Meter. A meter bar represents a fixed value in a range delimited by a min and max value. This value is visually rendered as a bar. And to know how this bar looks, we compare the value to some other set value. The, the low and high values divide the range in three. The lowest part of the range is between the min and low values, include the, including those. The medium part of the range is the is between the low and high values, excluding those values. The higher part of the range is between the high and max values, including those values. The optimum value defines the optimum value for the meter element in conjunction with the low and high value. It defines which part of the range is per As the optimum value is in the lower part of the range, the lower range is considered to be the preferred part. The medium range is considered to be the average, and the higher range is considered to be the worst part. Okay. We can all see how this is going. The medium part of the image, lower range is considered to be average, medium range is considered to be preferred, and higher range is considered to be optimum value is in the higher part of the range. Uh, this is just the opposite of the lower part of the range. All browsers that implement the meter element use those values to change the color of the meter. If the current value is in the preferred part of the range, the bar is green. If the current value is in the average part of the range, the bar is yellow. If the current value is in the worst part of the range, the bar is red. Such a bar is created using a meter element. This is for implementing any kind of meter. For example, a bar showing total space used on a disk, which turns red when it starts to get All right. The content inside the meter element is a fallback for browsers that don't support the element and for assistive technologies to hold. Support for progress in meter is fairly good. There is no support in Internet Explorer, but other browsers support. Inclusion. As you'll have seen above, there are a lot of different types of available form. You don't need to remember all of these details at once. You can return to this article as often as you like to check up on the details.